In this example problem, we're going to be looking at a plain concrete prism that was subjected to a compressive stress of 2000 PSI at 10 days after the casting of the concrete, um, at which time the concrete strength was 5000 PSI. Uh, the prism had been steam cured for one day. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, estimate the initial strain caused by the stress and the magnitude of strain after the prism has been loaded for 100 days in an environment where our external relative humidity was 70%. The modulus of elasticity for our concrete is 4,035 KSI. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is uh, calculate our retire, uh, required times for our creep calculations. Um, the load was placed on the concrete 10 days after casting and one of these days was steam cured, uh, we're going to assume that one day of steam curing is about equal to seven days of moist curing. So our um, TI, the time at which the load is placed on the concrete, is just nine days of you know, no curing plus uh, one day steam curing times our uh, seven days um, or one day steam curing equals seven days moist curing um, conversion. So we'll assume that our TI is 16 days. Our uh, prism is loaded for 100 days, so our T minus TI term is going to just be equal to 100 days. The uh, stress strain relationship that we'll use is just a simple parabolic relationship, um, kind of based on the modified Hognestad relationship, um, where our strain at ultimate uh, is shown here. And uh, we're going to account for our creep effects using the effective modulus, so our EC effective. Um, so essentially, anywhere in our stress strain relationship where we have um, EC, we'll replace it with EC effective. In this case, it's only in our um, strain and ultimate uh, stress term. So we'll replace that with EC effective and, and move forward. Um, so the first part of the example, we're finding the initial strain. Um, so the initial strain uh, is short term. Um, so we don't need to use the uh, effective modulus and, and we're, we aren't accounting for creep in this term. Um, so the first thing we'll do is find our strain at ultimate strength. Uh, so this, using this expression, is just 2 times our F prime C, which is 5 KSI, divided by our EC, which was given as 4,032 KSI, which will give us a strain at ultimate equal to 2.48 times 10 to the negative third. Um, we can then use this uh, with our given uh, applied stress and concrete strength to calculate our um, strain under our given load. Um, so here we'll have 2 KSI applied, our 5 KSI strength, and then the rest of our term, which is um, 2 times our strain, which we don't know, divided by the strain that we just found, negative 2.48 times 10 to the negative third, and then minus uh, our strain that we don't know, divided by the strain that we found, and all this squared. So uh, we have one unknown, our epsilon CF. So we can solve for that, and we can find our epsilon CF is equal to negative 0 0.559 times 10 to the negative third. Um, so you can see that uh, we could also use a, a linear elastic assu assumptions, um, and we could calculate our strain to be negative 0.5. Um, so you can see that a linear elastic in this case would be, um, or would give a similar result to our uh, parabolic assumption for the stress-strain relationship. Next, we, uh, we're going to find the strain after 100 days. 
Um, so you see we're doing after 100 days, so that means we're going to include um, the effects of creep. Uh, so this will be the total strain and the creep strain after 100 days. Um, the first thing that we need to do is we need to find a creep coefficient. Uh, we can use um, any procedure that we would like to find the creep coefficient. In this example, I'm going to use um, ash to lrfd 2004 to find uh, the creep coefficient, but, but again, you can use that any procedure you want. Um, most procedures will have a, a few different terms. Uh, the first one shown here is uh, uh, taking into account the geometry of uh, the specimen or, or the member, or whatever you're looking at. Um, so this is, uh, geometry is taken into account using the volume to surface area ratio. Um, so for our uh, prism, the ends are not exposed to the environment. So um, we don't include them in our surface area. Um, this volume to surface area ratio is uh, looking at how water can, or how easy it is for water to um, leave the, uh, the member. So um, obviously water can't leave out uh, faces that are covered. Um, so here we're only looking at the, uh, the side faces. All right, so anyway, our, our volume of our prism is 12 inches by 12 inches by 48 inches. Our surface area, we have four faces that are 12 inches by 48 inches. So this will give us a volume to surface area ratio of three inches. So going to our table from, or our, sorry, our uh, figure from ASHTO 2004, um, our T minus TI is 100 days, and we come up to our three inch volume to surface area ratio, and we can find our correction factor. Um, so th there's also uh, a set of equations that we can use um, but either way here, we'll find our uh, volume to surface area correction factor to be 0.68. Um, so next we, we can find our, our factor accounting for our concrete strength. Um, so here we'll have our Kf is equal to 1 divided by 0.67 plus concrete strength is 5,000 PSI divided by 9,000 PSI, uh, which will give us a, a KF equal to 0 0.82. So now we can plug these two factors uh, with our relative humidity in to find our creep coefficient. Um, so we'll have our creep coefficient is equal to 3.5 times 0.68 times 0.82 um, times 1.58 minus our uh, humidity, 70% relative humidity was given, divided by 120, um, times our TI, which we found to be 16 days, uh, to the negative 0.118, and then times all this last term. So we're loaded for 100 days to the 0.6 power divided by 10 plus 100 days to the 0.6, which will give us a creep coefficient here of 0 0.86. So we're gonna use this creep coefficient um, to find our uh, effective modulus. With our creep coefficient, we can now find our uh, effective modulus and use that to find the um, strain caused by our sustained 2 KSI stress. Um, so first, finding our effective modulus, um, we'll take our modulus of elasticity of our concrete, so uh, 4,032 KSI. Uh, and we'll divide that by one plus our creep coefficient, uh, which will give us an effective modulus here of 2,169 KSI. 
uh, we can then uh, use that to find our effective strain at ultimate strength, um, which will be negative 2 times 5 KSI divided by our effective modulus, uh, 2,169 KSI, uh, which will give us a strain at ultimate here equal to uh, negative 4.61. Times 10 to the negative third. Uh, now we can use that effective strain in with our uh, parabolic expression uh, for stress strain um, and, and solve for um, our unknown long term strain. Um, so here we'll have, uh, we have negative 2 KSI is our applied st uh, stress, 5 KSI is our strength of our concrete. 2 uh, times our long-term strain, which we're looking for. Uh, we found our uh, effective strain at ultimate strength. And then we're going to uh, subtract epsilon CF long-term divided by negative 4.61 times 10 to the negative third squared. And here, our only unknown is epsilon CF. So solving for epsilon CF, we can get uh, our epsilon CF equal to um, negative 1.04 times 10 to the negative third. Um, if we want the creep strain only, then we need to take off our elastic strain. This uh, strain that we found includes both creep and uh, elastic strain. Um, so our creep strain would be equal to our negative 1.04 times 10 to the negative third um, plus Our elastic strain that we found, uh, 0.559 times 10 to the negative third, um, which would give us here a uh, long-term strain of uh, negative 0.481 times 10 to the negative third. So that's our uh, creep strain only, our total long-term strain. Um, and then we can also compare that to what we would find just using a linear elastic expression. Um, and we'll see where we're within about uh, 10%. So um, generally, we can assume uh, linear that we're linear elastic up until about uh, 60 to 70% of our um, ultimate strength. Um, we'll see that the difference with long term is uh, a little larger than um, with our, our short term. Um, but that concludes uh, this this design or this example.